I'm about to start reading Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata, translated from the Japanese by Ginny Tapley Takamori, published by Grant Art, this edition. Cool cover, I haven't seen this one before. I'm pretty excited to get into it. And I'm gonna start before my baby starts crying. Check in soon. <laughs> So I just finished reading um, Convenience Store Woman this morning, which was my first book for Women in Translation Month. And I really, really liked it. I It took me, like, it's a very short book, but it, nevertheless it took me a few pages, I don't know, like 30, 40 pages to get into because I found the style a bit just kind of hard to read, I suppose, because Kiko, the protagonist, is so direct and rational quote unquote that it yeah it took me a while to kind of get into the rhythm of her way of narrating but once I did I really loved it and found it a really sort of deadpan and by the end almost absurdist kind of story and critique of the expectations of Japanese women in society sort of the expectation of marriage um and the types of job and husband you should have and stuff like that but I loved Kiko, the main character. I thought, despite it being kind of a critique and quite deadpan, it was such a warm story where you were really rooting for Kiko the whole time, even though she, you know, described herself as abnormal and she sort of had no interests or hobbies or anything except for working in the convenience store. And... Um, yeah, I really loved her descriptions of working in the convenience store and I found it really interesting how despite the fact she was a completely well-functioning member of society by working in this convenience store that everybody used all the time, she was still treated as though she wasn't useful um, unless she was interested in a guy or getting married or at least looking for another job and stuff like that. Anyway, I really recommend it. Like the critique element of it is not subtle. It's quite obvious, but I felt like that worked quite well because Kiko's manner was so direct and forthcoming. So it sort of fit with the, her manner of speech and thinking and stuff like that. So I really loved it. I'm also about to head to the library to pick up a few more books uh, translated by women. So, uh, yeah, I'll check in there and see what I pick up. around the house but you know what I'm gonna ignore it and try and get in some reading um, before my sister-in-law and my niece come in. I just sat down with um, this short story collection that came out through Brow Books a couple of years ago and it is Apple and Knife by Intan Paramaditha who is an Indonesian writer and this collection was translated by Stephen J Epstein so I've been meaning to read this for a while actually and I've, I think I've actually borrowed it from the library before and just haven't read it in time before it was due back. So I'm going to give it a go. And I think this collection is feminist and also draws in fairy tales and sort of supernatural elements. But to sort of talk about prejudice, maybe racism, not sure. 
but I will let you know. It's nine degrees. It's so cold. I'm just um, picking up some coffees for a girlfriend and I. We're just gonna go to the park with her toddler. And then I'm gonna go and finish reading Apple and Knife. I read a couple more stories this morning. I'm about halfway through. A really good, very dark, very feminist, sort of like ghost stories and a bit of supernatural stuff over there. Hi guys, so I'm back inside now. I kept recording for a while while I was outside, but earlier today, it was so cold and windy that you could barely hear what I was saying. And also it was really hard for me to even concentrate on what I was saying because it was so cold and most of what I said was nonsense. So now I'm home and I've had a nice warm shower and some a hot chocolate and a hot lunch and I'm feeling better. Um, I also got a bit more reading in of apple and knife so i'm about halfway through the collection now and i'm really enjoying it um it's very feminist and i would say most of the stories or all of the stories have a supernatural element so the opening story the blind woman without a toe is like a retelling of cinderella from one of the stepsisters perspective and that one i enjoyed it was sharp and witty and clever but i would say it was sort of quite obviously a feminist subversion of that tale. And so even though the ending was pretty cool, it wasn't particularly surprising, whereas a lot of the other stories incorporate other sort of mythical or fairy tale elements, but in a less specific way, although some do include um, like Indonesian folklore. And so I think I prefer those ones because it's less obvious what's going to happen and less predictable. For example, I just read, read one called The Queen, which is about a queen of the South Sea who is um, like a troublesome spirit that lives in the ocean, a female spirit, and she's very beautiful and seductive. And she basically takes on physical form to get together with this sultan. Um, and he wants to be with her because she's so beautiful, but the price is that all his descendants are basically her slaves. So there's that's in the background of this story. And then um, the main part of that story is a man who has a dream about this queen and is desperate to find her because he believes that he, if he wants to find a version of her in real life because he believes that if he gets together with her, he'll be able to share in her power and become rich and powerful and prevent bad things happening to the company he works for. And the ending was really cool. I didn't, I wouldn't say it was a twist or a particular surprise, but I didn't predict what was going to happen. And I, I liked it a lot. So, so far, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say this collection is like completely knocking my socks off, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's a, it's nice to read. It's easy to read and it's sort of very empowering and I'm really enjoying the element of the, you know, the ghosts that appear. I, I like the ones that and it's not as obvious what's going on, um, but explore some element of female repression or struggle or expectation, things like that. So hopefully I'm going to finish this book today. I don't have that many stories to go. Oh, Harry's crying in the background, so I better hurry up. But um, I'm going to cheer up Harry and then do some housework and then hopefully read a few more later today. I'll check in then. Bye. coming out one of the best things about winter or the wattle
some more down here above the bridge. Hard to see. I'm always torn because in winter the leaves fall off the uh, deciduous trees and which are non-native and you can see across the creek where all the gum trees are not on this video very readily but um, but then during summer it's really lush and green and when all the leaves grow back on all these like trees here but then you can't see across the river so hard to know tough problems hey hi guys so um, oh kitty don't know if you saw her um this is basically the end of week one of women in translation month and i've just polished off apple and knife um by intan paramiditha i think i said before it didn't knock my socks off completely but i did enjoy it it was um a really nice writing style that was quite easy to read and um the theme was very empowering it was sort of disobedient women a lot of women taking revenge either on men or on kind of the social structures that um, constrain them in various ways and with a lot of supernatural sort of gruesome gothic horror elements um, with folklore and myth and stuff woven into which I really enjoyed so yeah it was a three star for me like I would recommend it but it's you know it's not you know there are probably other feminist books out there doing maybe more inventive or groundbreaking work but this this was still really strong I still really liked it yeah so Harry and I are about to go visit um, a girlfriend and her baby and go for a walk maybe it's pretty cold and rainy looking out there so I guess we'll check in in the next vlog and I've just started All My Goodbyes by Mariana Demopoulos who's an Argentine uh, writer and it's a novella out here in Australia through Giramondo Press I think it came out a few years ago and I'm really enjoying that so far so in the next blog I will be able to update you on that hope you guys are all enjoying Women in Translation Month too let me know what you have been reading bye